today we're gonna be making gorditas de picadillo so you're gonna need a pound and a half of meat flat meat or ranchera meat one fresh tomato dice cilantro and a quarter of an onion and a big uh, garlic clove you're gonna dice it all up then you're gonna heat up your wherever you're gonna cook your meat in my case I'm gonna use this cast iron put it in there the meat by itself I'm going to put some lollies to season this meat. Yeah. Enough. It has to be very hot. It's almost like you're making tacos de asada. So then you're gonna add tomato sauce. Okay, so the meat is ready. And I'm in the middle of this, I'll put half of this onion because I chopped half an onion and I only need a quarter of it. And I'm gonna put in the cilantro and the garlic. And I am leaving the tomato to the end when all this is sauteed just a little bit. I forgot to mention not to add that much lard because you're gonna salt it. Okay. Oh, if, take a look how it looks. The onion is incorporated and it's cooked and so is the cilantro. So now I'm going to add the tomato. Smells so good. So I'm gonna add tomato sauce. I have this a lot because I use it a lot, mainly in almost everything I do. So like around half of the can is good enough. And this can is eight ounces, so you'll use four ounces. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of water, uh, like a quarter cup. If that, maybe a third of a cup. Because you don't want this extremely runny when you're putting it in. Grandma, stop. Yeah. So I'm adding a little more. Yeah, so it's like a quarter of a cup of water. So you have enough juice here. And now the last thing I'm gonna add is gonna be chicken oil. So don't add a lot of lorries at the beginning when you just have your meat cooking the meat. So this is one cube, one teaspoon. See, it has some broth to it, but not a lot. That's what you want. So 
so you need to let it all cook for five more minutes and then taste it and make sure it has enough salt to your taste Okay, so this picadillo is ready. If you wanted to add jalapenos or serranos, you could have added them along when we added the onion and the cilantro. But since we're cooking for our kids as well, we're not gonna put none of that. But it's really, really good. We already tried it and it's so good. So you wanna make it spicy, just add, cut up some serranos or jalapenos and you add a, a real good kick to the, to the meat. And, I like chili, so I would have loved it, but the kids got to eat too. Wow. Go. So here are our beans that I made in my quick pot. <clears throat> They're done in 20 minutes, so we're going to refry these beans right now with the remaining of the onion that I had in, on my cutting board. And I'm hitting right now the cast iron where we're going to make them. You could also use uh, refried beans from the can. Whichever one you prefer, but uh, we just have a lot of beans, so we decided to make them. So here Reef. you go. You're gonna have your onion. With I have oil in there, vegetable oil. So I'm gonna cook that onion down a little bit, and then I'm gonna start adding the beans, and then we're gonna smash them. Meat is so good. Go. Okay, so if you see the onion is ready for us to put in the beans. And I do not add none of the liquid initially until the end to see how I want that. Because sometimes I don't like them that runny, especially when I'm doing stuff like this. Then I have one of these. I'm not sure what it's called, but it has a lot of holes, so you don't put in a lot of the liquid from the beans. Look how the, the beans cook very nicely in, inside the Instapot. Now I'm gonna smash all the beans up. So my beans are seasoned already. When I put them in there, I put salt, so I normally will not add salt to these anymore. Because of that, because I do use the broth of the beans to pour over the mashed beans. So here, there's all these. So they're Like I said, I add the bean broth and add it to see how, this is how you would control how runny you want your beans if you do this towards the end. Just be very careful with it. It's going to burn. So there you go guys. Refry beans. Not a lot of oil. Got a lot of flavor. Yeah, I re really recommend getting the uh, Instapot or Quick Pop, like Quick Pop, like the one we have. It make cuts the time in cooking pretty quick. Um, I made ribs in there, um, chicken, steak, um, stews, all that just cooks real quick. The meat comes out very tender. I mean, if we have four kids, so sometimes it's hard to um, to cook. So when if we could cut our time in half, when we want to make something um, that takes long, we'll just use this here. And we'll have
that food done pretty quick. As you see, little by little, I've been adding the broth in there. And I'm controlling how thick or watery I want the beans to come out to. Right here, it looks like the already cow on them. Because I want them to spread a little bit inside the little gordita I'm going to make. So this looks good already. I'm going to leave it at that. Like I said, we didn't season them because it already had salt when we cook our beans. Go. To make the gorditas, you're gonna need two cups of maseca, a little bit of salt, loop, water, which is basically not super hot, not super cold, right in the middle. I use this one. Some people just do it by hand, but I like to use this and a Ziploc bag open so it doesn't stick to the tortillero so I'm gonna put it in here and I do have a kitchen aid it avoids for me making everything by hand and taking forever so I am making enough for six people two adults and four kids but with the recipe you have over there of the picadillo, you can make all for a lot more people than six. And then I put in the water, put a little hole in the middle. And then I do it with my hand. So this is roughly two cups of the maseca and two of water you don't want it that watery either I basically stop once it doesn't really stick to my hand but right now I still have a lot of dry one out down there so I know it still needs some a little bit more water almost there a little bit more you almost use all the two cups of water so, touching it mm. okay. So, this is okay so it's ready now you pick up as much as you want of the dough and then you flatten it out a little bit here and then you put this like this. And bring it down now completely. Let them be a little thick like that. Then you I have already one cup over here of water. That it's warm water. And I basically go all around the gordita. Like that. To seal it. So in this case, you when you seal it, when it's cooking, it's gonna flare up better and it's easier for you when it does that because you could really cut through it if you miss this step it's still gonna cook but i'm not sure how well you'll be able to open it to put in the stuff so now i i've done a few already and i'm gonna put the other one here in my grill or comal so they're cooking so these i already have turned once this way so what's next, you, I'll turn them back this way, and then that cloth that I told you earlier that you would need, I basically put it here, like this, like a little knot type of thing, and you press on it a little bit, not that hard. You go around it, and it's basically going to help it open up. Okay, see, that's very easy. You do it like that, and then right now, once it opens up, you're going to see it lift, it's going to rise, and then I'll show you what I mean. This is already doing it a little bit, I don't know if you can see that, but it is. It's already flaring up, and that's basically what you want. That's the only way you're going to get to open it, to stuff it. So I turned them. 
So I turn them, I flip them over, and I'm going to do it to the other side again. It's hard to see in the video, but they are lifting up a little bit. So the the masa is rising from the center, and they're pretty much separating from the top and the bottom. And that's what you want, because that's the only way you're gonna create a pocket. You kind of see a little little bubble there. You pretty much want to, like she said, you want to create a pocket inside that we can stuff and make. So you see how this one is lifted? It's basically the air going through it. So what it does too, it cooks the inside of the masa, which is what you want because I'm not gonna fry these. Some people like to fry them, but I really don't. Okay, so I'm gonna grab it. As soon as I grab it, I have my cloth and I use it for this too, because it's super hot. And I could not do this without it. So. I'm going to show you right now what I'm doing when I'm cutting through and you basically have your opening ready and you so pretty see much, there it is. there's your pocket and that's what you want you create that pocket for the gordita to be stuffed okay so I put it here because it's ready to go and then every time you do that because have a knife specifically for that I clean it with my napkin to take the extra masa from it and then I'm gonna get the next one and I'm gonna do the same thing okay so, it's so easy have two so if you have a big grill like we do you'll be done pretty fast but if you don't, then I suggest you get a big one if you're going to be making for a lot of people. And it's really easy once they cook thoroughly. To create a pocket and this one doesn't. It's open though, but it's hard for it to show it. Right there. See? to all of them and these are not done yet so I can't cut them so just repeat the process until you're done the amount of gorditas you want so you see that how they're rising from the center and pretty much that's that's when you know they're it's most it, they're pretty much ready and then you're gonna have a pocket you'll be able to open it up that way you're able to stuff it Okay, so they're done, and I'm going to start stuffing them. I put beans in here, like so. Roughly, it's up to whatever you like and how much of it you want in it. And then you put in the next, this guisado, picadillo, see, in here. And there you go, you have one ready. So you're going to repeat this process with all of the ones you made. And I like to grab the ones that are colder because they're a little better to handle and when they're really hot. See, so here we are. We have the beans in there. We need some little more beans in the bottom. Like so, and then again, my guisado. Like I said, as much or as little as you want to put is up to you. So when I'm done with all this, I'm going to show you how we plate them. And if you want to put sour cream in here, you also could, or salsa. It's whatever you want to do, and people do them with different kind of guisados. But this is what we have today. Stuff it in 
this one was a little on the thin side so it's important to put them a little thick so this doesn't happen with, but you can still stuff it because it still did its thing And if you don't want beans, you don't have to put beans. It's whatever you want to put. There's people that just, you know, with beans and cheese, with rajas, with picadillo, chicharron. I feel it's like whatever you have on hand. So here is a completed product. Las gorditas. Look at that. So good. You say you could put crema or salsa. If you have some salsa, you could put some in there. That's pretty much just how you they come out. Real good. Thanks for watching.